Zero Accounting Software 2023 Rental Estimate and Customer Deposit. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. In our custom Zero homepage, going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, get great guitars. We're going to duplicate those tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. We're going to right click the tab up top again and duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down. We want to open the balance sheet and then tab into the right. We're going to open the accounting drop down a form of the income statement, but the comparative income statement we set up in a prior presentation. If you don't have that one, you could just open a normal income statement, but this one compares January and the current month we're working in February. Back to the tab to the left, drop down on the date range so we can customize it. We want 2023 and the end of 2023. Update that report. Now in prior presentations, we've been focusing in on our new source of revenue that's going to be great. It's going to make us millionaires. Uh, and that's going to be that we're going to rent some of our guitar equipment. So let's just take a quick recap in our flowchart. This is a QuickBooks desktop flowchart. We're just looking at it to see the flow of the process of our accounting cycle. So we have guitars that we've been buying and selling to generate revenue. We also then do guitar lessons and now we're going to rent some of that guitar equipment. So the process that we're going to use to do that is going to be that if someone calls in for a rental of a band set, we're going to set up an estimate or a quote and then we're going to pick up a down payment to reserve the equipment for them and lock them into that commitment of the rental. And then when they come in, we will actually have an invoice for them when we actually conduct the giving of the rental property, which will record the revenue. And then we will collect uh, the payment in our normal accounting process on, uh, on that invoice and deposit it. So that's the general idea. In order to do that, last time we set up a few new things. We set up another income account, which is in the drop down here, uh, accounting drop down, chart of accounts. And if we go into the uh, revenue side, we set up a new income line item of rental income. We then set up our items in order to populate that. So if I go to the accounting drop down, uh, let's not know the business drop down. 
and go to products and services, we set up the things that we're going to sell, the items that are going to drive the population of the quotes or estimate and invoices the bank set, uh, the, ba the bank, it should be banned, it should be banned. But in any case, the rental, uh, added rental guitars and whatnot. So we're going to have, this is the ba baseline. Let's change the name uh, if I can. Could you spell it right? Because you're confusing me. This is ridiculous. I don't even know. Okay. So let's edit the item. This is not a bank that we're renting. We're renting a band set. So we're going to say you have to buy the minimum band set at $2,000 if you want anything. And then from there, I'm going to go back to my products. You could add another guitar or an amp and, and modify it from that baseline point is the general idea. I have no idea what an actual rental of uh, band equipment would be. I'm just making numbers up as we go here. So we have some examples. Okay. So now someone calls in and they're like, hey, we want like a band set because we're making a band. And again, because we have it set up properly and we've educated the punk kid that we've got sitting in the shop taking the calls, then he can populate the quote and get everything rolling even though he's not the brightest bulb, you know, in like the Christmas tree bulbs or something. So we're gonna so we're gonna say that we wanna say add and he's just gonna say, I'll make a quote for you. You want a band set? We do that now. Let's add a quote. I'll tell you how much that costs. And let's say this is gonna be, what am I on customer? number let's just say number 10 customer 10 we'll add customer 10 and i'm just going to keep on going with feb 27 here so feb 27 the call in happened uh and then we're just, i'm just tabbing through the quote currency standard not going to a project exclude the tax all right and then the item i'm going to say well you have to and the are the punk kids like well you dude you have to do at least the baseline band set if you want the rental at all. And it's $2,000 at the baseline. And they're, and they're like, okay, whatever. But we, but then they're like, we want to have an added guitar. And it says right here, so the punk kid's like, and that like has two guitars, a drum set, microphone, and amplifier. And then they're like, well, we want an extra guitar. And there's like, oh, you could add a guitar. Let me see where that is here. You can add a uh, rental guitar. And they're like, we want two of those. They're like, that's another $50, bro. $50. And they're like, well, we also want another amplifier. It's like, we could do that too. If you want to piss off the neighbors, you can add an amplifier. And that will be amp rental amp another forty dollars and that'll be 40. so there we have it so then we can get the estimate uh currently populating at uh the 2004 and all of these i said were tax exempt that's correct i'm going to change this to four amplifiers for whatever reason they want four amplifiers they're really going to piss people off so that comes out to 160. So now we're at uh, the 2260 and then, and so now we can say whatever our baseline idea is on the down payment. So the, the next step would say, okay, we'll reserve that stuff for you. But like, dude, we've got people that want this stuff all the time. Uh, and we could sell this stuff at any time. So you have to give us a down payment to make sure you're locked into this system. So now we can use this to kind of figure out how much we would want on the down payment to reserve the reservation and make sure they're committed. So let's first uh, record this one. So let's say we're gonna, we're gonna save it and then we can send it. I'm just gonna say mark it as sent here. So we'll say mark as sent and then I can check that out. So if I go into my estimates business dropdown and go into my quotes here, we've got uh, the drafts, it went to the sent item. So I'm just going to pick that one and I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept it. So I'm going to say it's been accepted and now it goes into the accepted and now it's just waiting 
for uh, the invoice uh, to populate it on the invoice. So there it is. We can also take a look at the contact dropdown and look at all contacts. And we have our new customer number 10, we said. And if I look at it that way and check it out, we've got our info on the quote down below. So then we imagine the day comes and the customer number 10 comes in for, for uh, or, or now what we're going to do is also collect a down payment, I should say. So we're still saying, okay, now we want the down payment to lock in the fact that we're going to have the equipment for you. So now we're going to collect the payment. So I'm going to say drop down and we're going to say receive money. I'm not making the receive money form from, th from the quote yet because this is a prepayment that we're putting in place. And we can put the prepayment into if it's going directly into the checking account, but we might have that same issue if they're paying us cash or something like that. Or if we have a payment processor that we're going to put it into the clearing account. So I'll put it into the clearing account as has been our practice. And I'm going to say next. And we're going to say this is going to come from customer 10. Customer 10 and Feb 27 again. Feb 27 and all right and then uh i'm not going to put any items we're just going to say this is the down payment on estimate and i'm going to say that i'm just making up the number but we might in practice say it's some percentage of whatever the quote would be that they made and then i'm going to say that it's going to the other side of this is going to go to unearned revenue and I want to make sure before I do that, the drop down, I want to make sure that I, I make this a prepayment because uh, that will help us to track it just like we did for the other prepayment examples in prior presentations. So I'm going to make it a prepayment because we're not earning the revenue yet because we have not yet done the work. What I would like to do is put it into a liability account. If you haven't set one up, you could set you would set one up as a liability uh, that's not a lot. This is should be unearned revenue. Where did it go? I'll just type it in here. Unearned. There it is. So I put it in here at 225 unearned revenue, uh, other current liability account. So we're going to collect that $200. So what's this going to do? It's going to increase the cash account, but it's going to go into the clearing account. And then we're going to, the other side is going to go to this unearned revenue account here, a liability account. And it's going to track the fact that it was received from customer number one so that when they come in for the rental, we can create the invoice and apply this credit payment to it, this prepayment, this deposit to it. All right, so let's save it and, and check that whole process out, saving it here. And uh, I did that in the balance sheet tab. Why did I do that? I don't know. Accounting drop down. Let's open the balance sheet back up. Get your head in the game, man. Crying out loud. I hit the drop down and we're going to say custom date, bringing it on back to 2023 or forward to 2023. Update it. Okay, so there's the 200 in the clearing account here. So that looks good. The other side going to a liability account, uh, which is unearned revenue. So it's at 650. If I go into it, then we can scroll down. And this is where zero shines in tracking this liability account and still being able to connect it to a customer, even though uh, we're looking at a liability account. So now I'd like to be able to assign that to a particular customer when I'm doing my internal bookkeeping. And usually I have to, it's it's assigned to an accounts receivable to do that, but, th but zero has a nice system. So if I go to the tab to the left and I select my business dropdown, and I go to, and I go to my uh, invoices, for example, and then I go to awaiting payment. I can see my credit amount right here, so it's ready to be paid with a little yellow. That means it's like an overpayment that's going to be applied out. Or I can go to my contacts, all contacts, and I can see that in customer ten. So when the customer comes in, I can go to customer ten, and I can say, okay. Uh, I see what happened here. Uh, you had a, a prepayment and then you've got the quote, right? And so the next thing that's going to happen is we make the invoice and apply the prepayment to it, which Zero has a nice capacity to connect out, even though we're using unearned revenue 
instead of the accounts receivable account. All right, so we'll actually do the invoice in a future presentation for now. Let's do that last step on the deposit side. So if I go over here, we've got this amount in the clearing account. And so now I'm just going to I'm going to take it out of the clearing account and we're going to transfer it into the checking account, noting that as I do this, uh, let's first go into this this clearing account just to see you can see what's been going on with it here. Uh, so it's a clearing account, so it's been going up and then it's been going you know back down to zero on uh, a periodic basis. That's the idea or that's the concept behind the clearing account. So now it went up by the 200 again, it's going to go back down to zero. Now note that usually the reason we have the clearing account is because we want to be able to group things properly when they go into the checking account in the same format that will be shown as the deposit grouping in the actual bank, which will be reflected on the bank statement, possibly through the bank feeds. Now, in this case, we only have one uh, deposit. So we could have possibly made this deposit go directly into the checking account without any problem because we're not grouping it with any other payment. But if it's our normal system to go through the clearing account, because sometimes we might group them, we just didn't happen to have anything to group them with, you might just want to keep consistent with the same kind of method that you're using because that'll become a routine method. So now I'm going to say it's the end of the day. We only have that $200 or whatever. And I'm going to transfer that into the checking account in the same format as we'll be going into the actual bank account physically. So I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to do that with a transfer form as we have seen in the past. It's going to be, let's see if I can get this right this time. It's going out of the clearing account and it's going into the checking account. And we're doing this as of Feb 27. Feb 27. That's the day that everything happens. And it's going to be for $200. I'll just call it a deposit. And so it's from the clearing account to the checking account. That's it. Save it, transfer it, close it, greenify, green button it, and then tab into the right, update. And the, the other clearing account is gone, going into the checking account. Just to double check the checking, uh, double check the checking. And we're gonna say that we have that transfer happening increase in the check-in just as it should okay so let's go back on up that's all we'll do this time we'll continue on with the next step of the saga of the band rental uh next time when they come into the shop and actually uh we we enter the invoice and we apply the credit to it and rent the equipment so we're going to go to the accounting drop down and we're going to go to then the reports. Let's type in trial balance, trial balance. And let's go then to the drop down. We're going to look at custom date end of 2023, the end of it, update it. There we have it. So if your numbers tie it out to these numbers, great. Uh, if not, it might be a date range issue. If something is off and you were on last time after the last presentation and you're following along the things we changed, the clearing account went up and back down. That's why it's gone. And then the checking account is something uh, that we changed. And I think that's it because we just had an estimate. So we haven't entered another invoice. So everything else is the same. So if something's off, you can you can change the range, drill down on it, see if it's a form issue, drill down on the form, uh, the source document and make any adjustments necessary.